Disclaimer, none of the views and opinions expressed in this episode of Hoth Sweet Hoth reflect those of Hendrix College or KHDX, only those of me, Sam Gibson, and my guests. Hello, welcome everyone to this week's episode of Hoth Sweet Hoth. I am your host, Sam Gibson. You are listening to KHDX 93.1 or on KHDX.FM. Today I have with me who someone who is, in my opinion, one of the most prolific artists of the past decade that is an actual opinion i hold uh <laughs> sam ray of teen suicide american pleasure club julia brown ricky Eat acid is there it anything i'm forgetting on. there's so many like <laughs> dumb you know like joke one-off names and yeah no that's uh that's definitely what matters teen suicide ricky Eat acid uh, a couple other things and i appreciate that thank you it's good to be here you got a great um as a person who did really bad with college radio myself you, you're with you know um my friends shows and stuff even uh you're great you sound great oh, well, thank I, you. I, but thank you it's uh, it's very very good to be here uh and thank you for for having me definitely prolific <laughs> less now it drives me crazy i used to I used to be able to finish a song like every day, but then I think about it and it's like, okay, but why was that? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. what was I put it into that? And it's like, okay, a lot of them it's to, you know, pick up a guitar, or write something that's like a minute long and record it with like a boom box or something. And yeah. that's cool. Like, I like it. It's like the, what the Towns Van Zandt, Daniel Johnson, yeah, yeah, Johnson yeah. method, whatever. But um, I don't know. I get so not pre, I don't know the word. But I get so, I like go, sorry, Clover's just biting my hand That's over and over. I get so wrapped up in like so many things. Uh, Kitty and I are working on like so many things for our new Teen Suicide album, like at once. And it's so fun, but like it makes it so like one song gets finished every couple months. Um, but there's like 40 songs at a time, you know, like that we're working on and thinking about and recording. And then so like eventually they're all going to snowball and be like, you know, one after the other. That's mm -hmm. the hope. Um, God, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah. I followed you and Kitty on Twitter f separately for like two years before I realized you two were married. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for a while we weren't, but everyone, um, so a lot of people we knew, I think, thought we were going to be. So they were right. <laughs> she was right. I was right. It's nice. But, um, but yeah, that's, uh, there's, it's been a funny thing with like people, even that we like kind of know sometimes who just like, like even friends we've had or, you know, have like, or meet or something who just don't really super follow music at all. And neither of us, well, not me, at least I'm not like super, you know, I don't go out and like someone knows who I am or whatever, so it's fine. But um, cause it happened once at a hot dog stand and it was really weird. But <laughs> otherwise, not. <laughs> but um, they'll or like some people will like like her music or like my band, and then like it'll click. You know what I mean? Like way or they'll like both of us, and it'll click at some point. Like wait, what? actually, it's happened a lot where people like um like Ricky at Acid or Teen Suicide, and like I'll meet them at like a show or something, and they'll be like what one of the questions i really wanted to ask you i'm a sam you're a sam mm -hmm. meeting of the minds who is the best sam oh man that's a really good question it's not me <laughs> I, I hope to be on like hey stop i hope to be on the the like good side of of sam's um, me and my one friend sam uh we always had this like theory that proved true with a lot of people not everyone but like we're like every sam we knew including each other like was really tight with one other sam at any given point um and like almost all the others they met like instant animosity for no reason sometimes um of course it doesn't hold true you know like across the board i don't know if you found that to be the case at all but it was like real weird for like a bunch of years like i did have like one close friend sam and then like we kind of fell out of touch and i got another one and i and it had just happened to him the same way you know we were like just totally platonically in love right away mm -hmm. and it's like wait there's something to that but as for the best one oh man that's so tough i 
I'm going to think about this like the entire time we're talking and try and have a good answer before. Cause like, I don't want to be rash. You know what I mean? I feel like if I, if I miss someone really important, mm-hmm. that would be shameful. I but, think. um, but yeah. Uh, so I, I know how old were you when you first did teen suicide stuff? Um, eight, 18, 19. Uh, so I started like, learning about music i was really interested in music like composing music you know just music in mm-hmm. general uh when i was like a baby when i was like three you know four years old or whatever i started reading really young too like book books like around the same time however i can't do math or science so it like balances out really good like i'm talking like i can't even do like addition like if we go to the to like 7-eleven i can't even like add up change which is fine but um I got this book for Christmas for my grandparents that had a little built-in electronic piano that made like boop sounds. It, it only had white keys. The black keys were just painted, mm-hmm. but um, it taught you how to read music, which I still can't do now, but like I learned, you know, at the time enough how it worked. Uh, it, it was a Christmas book and it taught you, you know, like green sleeves, three note melodies. And uh, we had a piano in the house. My mom could, my mom can play. She has arthritis now, but she was really good. And she would play, um, she wasn't like, you know, like a concert pianist or anything, but she's like way better, you know what I mean? Than like, a, she's like an artist and worked for uh, for NASA and she just oh, could wow. play piano super well. So it was like, um, I'd sneak out of my room at night uh, when I was like a baby and um, crawled into the, or like walk, you know, toddled to the stairway in the dark and she'd be playing like Chopin and, you know, stuff like that, um, that we had books of on piano. So I was, all I would think about is like, oh my God, I want to, I, I want to do that so bad. I never learned, never, we didn't have any money. I never got to take piano lessons, but I would sit there all day and like mess with the notes and like figure out like by year, like I'd figure out how to play like for Elise. And then I'd be like, what if I play it backwards? Not like reverse, but it's like the notes go one way, like play it the other way. And like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. And then, you know, started something where I started thinking about it all. So I would write songs, I started, I couldn't sing at all, but I started trying to write songs where I sang really poorly when I was like, probably like 12 or 13 with friends. And um, which was like very much, I was like, you know, the basis for, for the band, what it became. We would play, I mostly played in like friends bands where I'd like, because I learned so much about like music theory and different instruments, they'd like bring me in and I'd play everything i'd play like all the i do all the harmonies because i could do that i would i can't can't sing but i could sing but you know what i mean mm-hmm. and um and i play all the guitar parts and i'd play like a synth i'd have like a synth with me or a keyboard and just try and do like everything i could i try to do drums but i couldn't you know it's no good and um we play like shitty things around town like mm-hmm. we play like um like some of them would get like pay to play gigs off myspace you know real <laughs> real 2000s you know type yeah. stuff uh recording with like the awful like creepy scene kid like older scene kids or like Uh, rich parents with home studios they bought it you know what i mean all that we did all the i like fell out of that for a while because of like drugs and health and various things and um by the time i you know was done spinning around that for a while uh, i wanted to try and i like really missed um doing that I wanted to like I'd always written songs but I never like was confident in them so I just trying to but like at the time like the trendiest thing like you know like the pitchfork stupid thing myspace band thing was like everything sounded like as bad as it could and the vocals were like unlistenably recorded like you couldn't make out a single consonant syllable um we're talking like you know times new viking and waves the first yeah. waves album like slow animal you know you owe me dude though he was more legible he's just awesome and like a bunch of other you know a bunch of things no joy no no age it was a real thing and um that I think gave me like the confidence enough where it was like, oh man, all this stuff sucks. Like, and I like it. So yeah, I can make stuff that sucks that I like. And so I started trying to do that. I was going to community college, which is a waste of time and money. I get so bored because I'd finish everything and I'd sit there and I'd like sketch out songs like in a sketchbook phase or on sheets of paper. Um, I was doing like all the Ricky and acid stuff at the same time. So I'd be like thinking about both of them. And um, 
I had to like that song, um, that song haunt me times yeah. three. Uh, like I was sitting in a, a literature theory class about Derrida or whatever. Um, I know that's what it was about, but I was so bored. And um, I got this idea of how I really wanted to rip off the stone roses. <laughs> I want to be adored. <laughs> and um, I wrote out the whole song and um, I wrote out the melodies. Um, I, like I said, I can't write music, but I can like write it in a way that I'll remember, you know, I'll just like, here's the note, you know what I mean? That Or like my flip phone record, like a voicemail. I would call my mom's house and <laughs> sing like the melody, like into the voicemail. So I'd be like, mom, don't pick up and sing into my flip phone. Like it was, you know, like, uh, like it was a, a recorder. And um, <laughs> so I did that. I wrote that whole song and I, I even wrote out like, like play this guitar chord, like this voicing into the tape player and then chop up the four chords from the tape. So that's what it does. So it goes like, instead of strumming a guitar, it's like, da -da 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 -da. I was doing that a lot then. I really like that. And um, I get in trouble all the time for that. And, but I'd go home, like I went home that day and by the end of the day, I'd recorded the whole song exactly how it was in my head. And it like, it blew my mind. Um, so I wasn't like super good at it, but like, you can hopefully hear from the the time I was like 18, 19 recording the the songs on Bad Vibes um, mm -hmm. where they're like, like, I still like some of it, but it's like unlistenable, you know, recording wise. <laughs> I was young. I did it. Like I played all the drums on that except one song and I can't play drums. I can barely play them now. So from that to like, like even a year or two later doing, um, you know, this, the real prolific year we had, we did like DC Snuff Film, Waste Yourself, Goblin Problems, Hymns, My Own Hell, like, you know, all those things yeah. in, in like nine months. <laughs> and um, I, I don't know, definitely got better, you know, as it went when Skiz, the drummer uh, and my friend, you know, joined and was, he gave me a lot of confidence. I really miss, I missed for a lot of years having that where you have someone, you know, you really, mesh with and bounce ideas off of like he came up with a lot of this stuff uh like he wasn't he didn't write songs he didn't sing he didn't come up with like melodies stuff like that but like we'd go out like walking and smoking a cigarette or something we both did a lot of drugs at the time not anymore mm -hmm. and he would show me like for example he wrote a poem and the poem was what ended up becoming um we found two dead swans and filled their oh, bodies wow. with flowers later on. Like none of the lyrics in the song were in the poem, but he wrote a song about with that or a poem with that title. And I thought it was so beautiful. And like later on when I was really sick, I was stuck at home for a couple of weeks. I, um, I got really obsessed with one of my favorite songs is a uh, end of the world by Skeeter Davis. And I wanted to write something that like really ripped off the way it felt, not like how it sounded as much, but just if I could help it, <laughs> it kind of rips it off anyway in six, eight, but, um, I, you know, I talked to him through the whole whole thing and I was like asking him, can I blatantly steal from what you wrote for this title? You know, he's like, mm -hmm. yeah, dude, we're in the band together, that kind of thing. And it's cool, like Kitty and I have that now, which is great. Like, I'm, yeah. God, I got really far away from what you asked. I'm really no, sorry. I, I'm, I, I'm I, drinking like my fourth coffee of the day. No, I, I, I like it. And I, I'm like, <laughs> I won't do that again. But I'm, I'm getting like teen suicide lore. So yeah there is it's a funny amount of it we're uh especially because like for so many years anytime i talk to like a publication to put it with you know trying not to put it a certain kind of way <laughs> i would we would try either me or all of us we would try to come up with the most outlandish lies that we could that sounded believable <laughs> um even if we were like on camera getting interviewed um, and they just would print all of it every time. So there's like all this conflicting fake information where people are like, hit me up on Twitter or like on Instagram or something like, Sam, tell me about like what happened in the McDonald's when Torts got arrested with it. It's like, what? Oh yeah, nothing. No, we made that. We thought it was funny. We were messing with them. Like, and then there'll be something like real in the middle of it all. And everyone's like, oh, I bet it's a joke too. And like your friend got stabbed in the back of your coat. It's like, no, that was real. Like that was... That was that was dark. Like I really dug a grave for myself with that all. So I, or a hole. I mean, but um. So I don't do that now, and I never did it. Like I never would like go on someone's show and just like make up stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. It's mean. But when it was like, you know, like the fader or, or something, yeah. you know, they don't they don't care. It's a press machine. So it's like that was funny. But yeah, um, 
I feel like I've spent a few years paying for that and digging back out of that. So uh, it gets away sometimes yeah. or like funny stuff comes back around, but um, it's nice to talk about uh, without any of uh, without any of that immaturity. <laughs> like i'm almost 30 that's that would be embarrassing now mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be awful if i was doing that um so for our first song uh cut mm -hmm. grass one by the aqueduct ensemble could you, yeah. could you tell us a little bit about this so this is something uh, a couple years ago uh right when it had first come out my friend spencer who is the, the second song uh the blaze field one he um he sent me this album and he said like basically i gotta hear this it's incredible and spencer doesn't send me stuff very often but when he does it's like the best thing i've ever heard and something that i would never have heard of otherwise like he just he like lives in like you know like the whole dimension jumping thing people believe mm -hmm. in now or like it's like he he lives part time in like another reality and like brings me little pieces of it to share yeah. and so um from what i what I got from him, what I understand about it, and this, this I think is right, but I don't know. I have the vinyl and it says this on the back, kind of, uh, that they recorded this album, these couple of guys in their house in Ohio, I think in Akron or Akron, or, um, but I don't know, but um, in Ohio, I know that. And um, they recorded it in the summer, uh, like in the evening until it got dark. Uh, I think Spencer told me like with the windows open everything mic'd up in one room you know a lot of overdubs but mostly like the way we record too as a band like live mm -hmm. live ish um, and you know it's like it's very hard to describe it's almost like a um, I don't even know it's like library music jazz ambient something uh, but it's none of those things it's but it's very much like the music Spencer and I make, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Like we get together on just like on Instagram live sometimes like at a distance right now. And like, we'll play with him on like sax and me on piano or something. And it'll sound like, you know, the shittiest imitation of, of that record. Mm -hmm. So it's very like, it, it's very much up our alleys. It's beautiful. It sounds just like, um, like that, that part of, um, you know, a summer rural-ish, you know, rural suburban summer where you have the the whole big house with the windows open and all the noise outside. All right, this is Cut Grass One by Aqueduct Ensemble. Stay tuned.
since you were kind of young when doing teen suicide and stuff like that and we also remember an interview i listened to a couple years ago where you said that you would write songs about like stupid twitter stuff and then people would come to you and say this is like the this and say what the song means to them yeah. and how something kind of maybe kind of bled out through the stupid twitter stuff um yeah how do you feel about that happening now are you more conscious about it i'm glad you asked it's one of my favorite things to think about yeah uh even at the time when that happened i don't think it like really bothered me but what bothered me was i felt like by telling them what i intended it would like burst a bubble yeah. they had about it and so i tried to be like really conscious of that um when i talk about songs the only thing that really bothers me a bit and i try really hard not to let it but it's tough is um people uh taking like a very interesting wrong interpretation of me as like a person rather than an artist via what i write but that's like inevitable when you're yeah. an artist i mean like look at connor Oberst, look at elliot smith not that i'm like anywhere as good as that but like i'm saying that it's like it's been around forever you know it's just mm -hmm. like like you, you sing wispy sad songs like well, you know, it's it's not even like politically correct to say what people think of that. It's like stupid. But anyway, like, um, I don't know why that, since I was like a little kid, it always something that really bugged me for some reason, even in like movies is when like someone's like being misinterpreted, I guess. It's like, it's weird. Like when the little kid is like, mom, there's a UFO outside. And she's like, no, there's not. And you see it and you're like, oh man, but there is like, why don't you believe him? And it's, I don't know why that bugs me. So I, I try to get over that. But like when it's just interpretations of music, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. It used to like a little bit, like I said, it mostly like bugged me because I felt like I'd be letting someone down if I was like, like the song in question that of what you mentioned that it makes me think of as um, Grim Reaper, where that's what, that's there's what a was, yeah. there's a tweet um, that I wrote that about by a really awesome like person who um, runs. They have a different Twitter now, um, but yeah, it was like a joke, you know, like weird Twitter tweet I saw, and I thought it was such a funny thing to try and expand because that's just like what it's the, what it's at the core of like art is like dumb idea become something incredibly almost touching to you the the listener via what you mm -hmm. take from it and so I, I always like I developed like real early this idea that I try to like adhere to for myself like my own sanity that like when you're making music <clears throat> it can be like as personal as anything on earth to you and like for me I don't usually write about myself or my life but I like write things that are very personal to me via being about something else, like not about a character, not about myself, not about a fiction, like, but just kind of like, I look at it like, like how urban legends work, you know, someone says one small thing to somebody and it snowballs out of proportion until it's something really big by the time it gets to mm -hmm. someone else. That's kind of how songwriting is, is like at the core, it can be like something very small and mundane, but that is like, real meaningful to you. Like I think of the Duster song, Cooking, where the lyrics are just, uh, you know, hanging on the phone. There's like three lines and um, talk about the weather, uh, dreams come back later in the week. And um, yeah, it's like when it's, what's at the core of a lot of art. It's like the the ice box poem about the plums or oh, whatever, yeah, like yeah. it can be, you know, but um, when you're making something, the only thing that matters is what it matters to you. Cause I don't, well, me at least, I don't write for anybody else or anything else at its core. Like I'll only ever make something if I want to, if I feel like it, if it feels like something to me. And like, I'll make stuff for fun as a joke. Cause I want to see what happens. But like, if I'm making something that matters to me, it's cause it matters to me. And uh, the most I look at it at that point is like, I don't want to write something that in, you know, the blind spots I have, it sounds really stupid or creepy or gross or misinterpreted that way. Obviously that's important if you're releasing music, but, um, but yeah, like I'll write something and it's like, I'm only thinking about like what it's meaning is to me, whether it's, you know, the real serious songs are usually the ones people think are, jokes which is fun and the, it's like the randy newman thing you know short people versus i love la yeah. you know one was satire and one was satire but <laughs> people <laughs> took them both the wrong way but um once you once it comes time to release the music like 
it's not yours anymore as an artist it's gone you have to let it go you let it fly away and you never think about it again you never listen to it again you only think about it if you you know you have to perform it whatever but um and at that point you just you give up all ownership of it because your interpretation while it has a bigger value to some people maybe if they they want to know it it's not important you know to the listener unless they unless they want it to be like we argue all the time about um, artists and their intentions and stuff, but like, it's funny. Derrida came up earlier because I like I very much agree with that uh, school of thought with it, where mostly where he thinks it's an endless chain of signifiers without a signified. I think that there is a signified, which is the author's intent, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, everybody, what they interpret a song as, it has meaning to them, and like I'm never gonna tell them, you know that's wrong stop you know don't don't you know the dumb song i thought was funny like means a lot to you like that sucks and you're like what that's stupid and i see that all the time it's so gross i see like people write music or whatever and then they can't let go of it you know what i mean like i've i've recognized when i can't let go of it before like uh that album in abundance of strawberries i did mm. i didn't want that to I didn't want to let go of it. So I did it for like two years. I could have released it and I, kept, I got offered like various deals for it because I guess the music industry still existed then. But I didn't want to do that yet. So I would only give it to people if they, you know, emailed me and asked. And then, you know, I could tell them like, yeah, this matters a lot to me. And here it is, you know, ask me anything, whatever. And that was nice. And eventually, you know, I got over it and, you know, got my fill and I was like, okay you know, goodbye. Um, if anyone asks me, you know, I'll tell them within reason. There's some songs that it's like the joy of it or like the power of it or whatever rests in its mystery, you know, so embrace the mystery. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, I'll always, you know, I'm, I'm like very, if any kid, any, Kitty and I talked about it recently, how like we both like, we were like, are we too like, well, yeah, oh my god I gotta take crap it's like are we too forthcoming about like all the things we make and do and write about and like how we we did this dumb thing and it's mm -hmm. like and then you know we'll see it in a bunch of songs <laughs> and it's like that, that's you know that's basically socialism but maybe at some point we should pretend like what we're doing like is harder and like how and the songs are writing like mean more because like we, I don't know, I kind of realize that people like take their, it's like a when you're training a dog or a cat, they take their cues. That's a really bad analogy. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Okay. That's the worst <laughs> thing I've said. That's not, how, that's not how I view like art and artists and fans at all. But what I mean is that like um, what I, how I act about it or what we say about it, like, you know, it kind of matters more than you think. And I realized that suddenly mm -hmm. that like, Oh yeah, that's I guess the point of what I'm getting at the beginning part of like, you know, I, I, I caught myself wanting to tell people like, no, you know, this song is about this and this means this and like, no, that doesn't mean that. And it was like, wait, that's joyless. You know, that's awful. Why am I going to do that? Why do I want to do that? Like, seriously, like what, what, where is that coming from? You know, and obviously it's, you make something, it matters a lot to you, but yeah, it's super healthy to let it go. So that that is something I definitely learned early on and try and stick to. It's hard sometimes. And sometimes I see people being like, yeah, this song is about this, like on Genius or something. And it's like, oh, no, no, it's not. I, then, you know, then I'll step in and be like, if it's like, you know, that's a, that's a horrible website, Genius. And it's like, a I, I think Genius annotations ruined an entire generation of music listeners. I, it literally ruined how so many people think about like music and art. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's bad enough, like the whole English class thing of like, in the Great Gatsby, like the color blue symbolizes his sadness. It's like, no, like ask Fitzgerald, like summon him, summon him on a Ouija board. I bet he will tell you. The color blue is because he saw, he, you know, I'm writing The Great Gatsby and, oh, in my head, look, there's blue drapes. It's descriptive, you know what I mean? Not everything is symbolism. So like, yeah, I, I guess sometimes it's fair to 
step in, but I could not agree more about um, <laughs> about genius. I don't even care. You know what I mean? I'll say it. I'm not. Yeah. Gonna, they're not going to give me any money. What do I care? Teen suicide. It's a bad yeah. website. Teen suicide on verified. <laughs> they um. Oh yeah, that's an, another thing about them is that you can only have an account verified for one artist, and mine is American Pleasure Club. So every bad thing i see written about teen suicide i have to like chime in and be on a chime in and it'd be like oh i wrote this it's not this and then it just gets like pushed into the void you know what yeah. i mean because like it's so dumb i don't know that's a that's like not a complaint that matters but it's this is a personal question uh i saw on your twitter that after you and your significant other make pancakes you use mm -hmm. the batter to make a monster pancake. Did you eat Every that time. monster pancake? Do you I eat actually it? did. I did. I don't always. <laughs> I'm not always able to, but it's it's like it's just gonna go to waste otherwise. Yeah. But um, yeah, this time this time I did. It sat on the it sat on its plate for a little while and cooled off because I, I was so full. But then you know it's sitting there, <laughs> and so our house doesn't have rooms or doors. Uh, like there's a bathroom obviously but um otherwise uh like the bedroom it, you know there's a curtain you can pull which is nice but um it's just like a big empty nice like wood house that a carpenter guy built pretty much in philly and it's great but so i'm walking past the kitchen all the time because there's not rooms or doors so of course in doing in doing that that, that pancake was gone <laughs> Clover really loves pancakes too. So every time I make them, she stands right next to me until I make her like one, like just this big. <laughs> and then she's a good girl. I love it. But yeah, it's not, not always able to eat it, but okay. it's more because it's fun <laughs> and I want to flip it. Usually I can flip it too, but that- I thought the flip that you tried was quite valiant. Well, I didn't have my big flipper. I usually have a big <laughs> flipper. I only had the little flipper. I can flip an omelet, which is harder, but I've messed that up too, though. But thank you. Uh, on to our next song, You Don't Know by Ellie Green Greenwich or Greenwich. Oh, no. Is that on there? Yes. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. I'd, I I'd got mine out of order. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is one of the, um, you know what? I can't answer how you say your last name because I don't know. I've always said, um, I think I go back and forth in my head, but for some reason, it's just like, it's, I think this is the first time it's, it's ever come up since I was like 18. Right. So I'd have to look it up, but I, as she was, um, Phil Spector's like chief songwriter and oh. like, like most, most of his like best songs, uh, you know, you can find pretty ample evidence online of people back then talking of like years later about her actually having written mm -hmm. um most of the you know the girl groups and blah 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 but um most i would i don't know I, I can't guess why she like never took off and only recorded like two or three things herself which are really hard to find even this song is like it's only been on spotify like very recently like i've had it forever and um but anyway, I um, I first looked her up because of the parenthetical girls song I love called um it's called a song for Ellie Greenwich, and um, I was like, who's that? You know what I mean? Like I was in I was probably in like tenth grade or something. I looked it up and I found this song, and it's like the most beautiful song ever. And I was like, oh damn! And it you know what I mean? And then I was just like, that sounds like you know blah blah blah. So I started looking up, and it's like, oh, it's because she wrote this and this and this and this. And I mean, Phil Spector is clearly like one of the most abusive awful people ever yeah so i don't know if that's why you know she never got a shot at her career or if she just didn't want to i haven't i haven't really looked it up um there's probably answers out there that i just <laughs> i just don't know but um even though she only has a handful of songs there's a couple others you can find it looks like there's a few on spotify now and there's like a bunch on youtube of like you know what i mean like uh random stuff uh demos and blah blah even this song there's like 10 different versions of but it's just it it deserves to be like the most iconic song of the era it's so it's so incredible from the time we started our band it was one of the things we were most trying to do you can actually hear it in the there's a part of it where it there's this wonderful 
stop start part with the chords slamming and her voice gets so big and high and perfect and there's huge harmonies behind it and um from the first thing we ever released as a band but that was the the last song on it the one called crying on uh mm -hmm. which we did shamelessly uh the same thing in six eights uh stop start you know it was like this song and roy orbison and neil sadaka and like you know like three or four other things that we were like veto and the salutations we were like throwing together to try and to try and do <laughs> like our version of it more than anything it was it was this one and it's always this one it's like i wish everyone on earth you know what i mean would <laughs> would listen to it well i'm happy we're getting the opportunity to share it with listeners today this is Me too. You, don't, you don't know by ellie greenwich stay tuned you don't know what i've been going through since the day i laid eyes on you and you don't know how hard it is to hide all my love baby deep inside and I'll pray The show is called Hoth Sweet Hoth. Are, are you familiar with the place Hoth? Like from uh, from the movie? From the movie? From the from the Star War? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that um the reference? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, good. So I do know it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. Well, I didn't know if it was going to be like far deeper than than my knowledge. But no. Yeah. I, I know. I know that place. Um, are you a Star Wars person at all? Well, I grew up with the the original three on VHS, like mm -hmm. pre 
pre all the stuff, you know, like nothing added to them yet. Like the, the, the Han shoots first, you know, OG like ripped off of someone's old TV Star Wars. I love them like more than than anything. I would watch them until they broke and then we'd have to get them again and then I'd watch them. And then like every time they finally broke and we'd get them again, things were different like a little bit. That's an interesting was, experience. Yeah, I didn't understand yet that, you know, movies, you can go back. And, you know what I mean? Like how that works. I mean, I guess no one really did because it was like really the dawn of that kind of like CGI tweaking like and like there's nothing that grosses me out more now than like people doing that like especially music when Kanye would like release um, Life of Pablo and then like a week later he released was, a new the, the and it's like I hate that so I think I firmly in the camp of like when you put out you know not all art but when you put out an album like it's final and you can do a new thing with it you know what I mean but like mm -hmm. you gotta say that you gotta save your <laughs> your steps otherwise you're just it's what i said before about letting it go that's a prime example of not being able to let it go but anyway um so i love those very very much um i remember very clearly when uh, the phantom menace came out and uh, being so completely disappointed with it as a kid which you know i don't know if that's fair or not it's been a long time but um I was pretty young. I remember because I was going to my friend's birthday party after and my mom painted my nails shiny gold for it because I really wanted that. And um, I remember standing around at her birthday party, which was uh, a very different environment than, uh, than our own house. So like I had to, had to like, I had my hands like this, like, you know, like hiding it because everyone was like ragging on me for, for my, 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 very ahead of its time of uh, non like like what is it with gender like not not confining to it and um so I didn't and, like I didn't know anyone there so I was just sitting around this like barbecue party at their like house with their dogs for like four hours my parents were both best friends with her two parents and we were best friends but all her other friends were there we didn't go to the same school so like i didn't know anybody and it's like who's your weird friend with like the nails painted so i just stood there for like four hours sometimes eating a hot dog taking in how much i hated this movie like with all my heart because i had just come straight from the theater there yeah and um i never really got over that like i saw the you know i saw the next two i didn't love them but I don't really remember those, but um, by the time it was really when Disney bought everything, because I was never like deep into the extended universe. I read some of the books, but like, you know, I never got like far into it. And I was too old to get around into like Clone Wars, uh, all the TV stuff by that time. Because like I grew up when Star Wars was like every kid my age loved it pretty much. It was like Pokemon. But it was still like a deeply uncool thing despite that like it was it's hard to explain like it was like right on the cusp of like like because they weren't making the new ones yet so like everyone knew it everyone i knew loved it and like nobody ever wanted to talk about it it was like really funny <laughs> like there were, no one had like toys and stuff but we thought um so i never saw the i've never seen any of the newer like you know um the new three or whatever i heard the Everyone I know loves the one that everyone hates, The Last Jedi or whatever. That's my favorite one. Yes. Okay, good. Because I, I, what I, what I know about it, I really want to see it because it sounds awesome. But I also, I, I'm really not a fan of the other guy who made like the the other two. I forget. JJ Abrams. Abrams. Like he's a I hack. just, he's a hack. And like, <laughs> I'm not a fan of Disney like like that. You know how some people are like, like Disney's their whole thing, and then other yeah. people like think disney is like the nazi antichrist or whatever and like which my mom is one of those people so i grew up with like like sneaking my friends like lion king clamshell vhs <laughs> home to watch at night like um now she would let me watch it but you know what i mean i didn't want to like let her down and be like but i like like the, the aladdin with the with robin williams and um so i'm like in the middle and like yeah but i i yeah i don't know i wasn't excited for uh because if there's one thing I like about the prequels, it's that George Lucas is out of his gourd completely. He's completely nuts. And that's awesome. Like, he, I'm not saying he's nuts as a person. I just mean, of like, course. 
it's a like Star Wars until Disney bought it was like a very deeply personal thing. And that's so rare. And like, like nobody makes big blockbuster movie trilogies that are like deeply personal, like about like, like he's writing like, like, I mean, like the first one like gets ragged on so much for like the extremely long scenes of like intergalactic Congress. Like, you know what I mean? But like, I like that. I think that's, that's like, it's very Terry Gilliam. It's like, it's like PG Terry Gilliam. Well, he did that with Time Bandits, but you know what I mean? It's like, um, what I don't like is the whole thing of like, and here's Chewbacca and him and Yoda are friends. <laughs> Why weren't they friends then when they met? Like, you know what I mean? Like you can't yeah. just retcon that stuff in. It's, it's gotta, you gotta set something up. And the Disney movies uh, seem to be a lot more of that. Like when the Mandalorian came out, it was like, Ooh, you got like a Werner Herzog and a Star Wars. That's cool. And then I saw like baby Yoda and I saw that it's like, and that guy's like Boba Fett's dead. And that guy's like, and it's this guy from this. It's like, like the whole cool thing about stars when I was growing up is that like every person that came into it, like whether it was like some rando, like nobody sci-fi writer, they made up so much stupid, cool stuff. Like everybody just brought into it, like whatever dumb thing they were obsessed with. You know what I mean? It was like, uh, like I can't even think of an example, but like, it wasn't about like, let's connect all the dots. It was like, let's put new dots down constantly yes. until there's just like, the biggest canvas of dots that like only like 10 people on earth fully understand like that is so cool to me so like obviously you know that's that's where i stand on it but it's not like it's not an argument stance it's not something mm -hmm. you know I, I i don't care it's just like um i don't know i feel like maybe i'm missing out because like they're probably just like fun movies and i'd enjoy what like I, I hated inception for a long time and then i watched it again and it was like I don't know. This is just like a James Bond movie, but dumber. Like, this is awesome. Like, why did I, <laughs> you know what I mean? I wanted, yeah. I wanted to hate it because it's stupid, but no, I can't deny, you know, I, I love dumb movies. Like, I love fun, dumb movie. So it's like, okay, like, I should probably just finally dig into that, like, suffer through the J.J. Abrams one so I can see, like, all of the insane stuff in The Last Jedi I've heard about finally because it sounds mm -hmm. so cool. Like, I'm sure you know exactly all the parts I mean, even though I haven't seen it. Like, because everyone I knew talked about it like nonstop. Like, we would be playing like Overwatch or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, well, this was, that was probably like afterwards then. But I don't know. Like, we, I, it was, I mean, it's inescapable. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't, yeah. you can't not know, even if you don't care, even mm -hmm. if you don't watch it. So, like, I feel like I've kept up more than I have, but I need to fix it eventually. I spend, I do the thing, I spend too long thinking, like, it's not at all, like, pretentious, like, I'm too good for, it's just, like, oh, man, everyone's, you know, going to see Star Wars, like, yeah, like, I'm not going to go see Star Wars, and, like, four years later, I'm, like, god damn it, I should have <laughs> Star, Star Wars, and then, you know, watch all five of the, like, the other day, I hadn't seen, um, so this is a really dumb thing about me. I love James Bond. Like James Bond is like my star. I grew up with James Bond like more than anything. Like I had every James Bond movie as a kid. Like GoldenEye 64 is the game I'm best at in the whole universe. And so the only two of the Daniel Craig James Bond movies I've seen, I saw them both in the theaters. And I bet you can't guess which two they are. The two that everybody hates and that make no sense right. together. Quantum of Solace and, and um, Spectre. Yes, those are the two I'd seen <laughs> until this year in lockdown. And you know why it is? Is because I was just I was, and Quantum of Solace makes no sense, even if you have seen it. It is a very real. dumb movie. Yeah, it's fun, but it's I, I think that's one of the only times like my friends have like walked out of the theater because they're like, this isn't bad really, but like we clearly missed something, you know what I mean? Like, we got to just do this again. So this year, I finally, I sat down one day and I watched um, Casino Royale and Skyfall back to back to, you know, to, to catch back up before the new one. Because, like, I just put it off for so long because I was like, I know I'm going to love these. Like, it's, there's nothing more up my alley. Like, the villains in those movies, Mads Mikkelsen, my favorite actor on Earth, the hottest man alive. Yes. And, um... What's his name? Who plays uh, Anton Sugar? Uh, oh, Javier, oh uh, Javier Bardem. Uh, yeah. And so like, like that, that is the most can't miss thing on earth. And yeah. it's amazing. They're both amazing. So I was just like, I knew that I'd like it. 
like so much that I just had to wait. I had to wait like until the perfect day where it's like, all right, you know, we're in lockdown like month four, you know, our house is falling apart all around us. We can't move out yet. Like life, you know, life is just a nightmare right now. Like cars in the shop can't go anywhere. It's 110 degrees outside in Philly. Uh, the, like the like National Guard and the CIA are driving around like sonic boom machines in the streets. Like <laughs> um, our next song, When You Write by what, what's When Ten You Write by Ten jar. in the Swear Jar. That was uh, the band that Shushu was before they were Shushu. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're uh, actually on the on the record. It's I, well, it has a different album name on Spotify. It was originally called um, like My Own Private Map or something like that. But I think they just compiled all their songs, you know, onto one thing. But you can actually hear some of the songs that would become Shushu songs, like that they did, like cool, real weird versions of on this record, like. They would do them with like songs that were like just Jamie Stewart and like electronics yeah. whispering would have like a drum machine and like five trombones. Like live. it was just so cool. But anyway, yeah, this is um this is one of them. This song and the song um Helsabot. Oh yeah, I love the valley is originally I on this record. It's very different. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, when you write when you write, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. It's like every you know the the song Sua on um his first Chushu album or like um yes really I mean you could choose any other pretty ones like um fabulous muscles doesn't really work because it's guitar I guess but you know what I mean it's like when he sings at his most like whispery operatic like melodic falsetto beauty mm -hmm. like I don't know it's a perfect song it's like we were very like unashamed and open when we were doing teen suicide at the beginning like like um like waste yourself dc snuff film you know like second album era um that like the thing we wanted to be when we weren't playing guitars uh loud was just shushu and like that's all and it's it has not changed in 10 years there's there's like this one song on our new album that is like I literally like thought it would be funny to try and sing in like the wispy shushu voice, the like, you know, the, <laughs> and it's like really <laughs> unapologetically. <laughs> it's just such a ripoff, <laughs> but it's so beautiful and I can't cut it off of it. But, um, but yeah, this is where it all came from was like awesome. this song more than any other, like it's this weird mix of like, I don't know if it's samples or if it's like they played like accordions and stuff, but like the sounds that were going on, like beautiful, weird, like synth pluck sounds and like like a single glockenspiel in, the, in someone's basement going like one note in the background and then like a drum machine that just sounds like, like, you know, like there's no bass, there's no, you know, it's just someone like, it sounds like wood blocks, like out of time and it's so yeah. cool and like, one really really badly recorded like voice singing far away or like or actually they did a thing a lot where it's like really close to the mic like you lean in like as close as you can mm -hmm. to like a condenser mic and you like whisper sing into it and it's like so you hear like every horrible noise the mouth makes and like little bit of spit and it's <laughs> For some reason, it's just, it's just like, it just stabs me like in the heart. Skiz too. We would like listen to this like high out of our gourds together being like, like, dude, like, you know, like how, how, like, how are they making this? And I'd be like, I don't know, dude, I'm going to find out. I'm going to, I'm going to just watch me. I'm going to do it. And then like, you know, we'd come up with like, like so many songs that were just ripped it off wholesale. I think the first time we did it was, um, you know, that song, um, uh, the things we used to do with people yes. you know part two um that was that's like that song actually is like a really big rip off of this one <laughs> <laughs> like not not like this song has like choruses and it sounds better it's more of a song but like when you hear like the way that the drum machine is you know what i mean you'll be like oh, okay like i see what you know what i mean what you were doing and i feel like the only reason we got away with that as much as we did is like all the people that liked us because we were like an emo band or whatever like just didn't listen to the the dumb stuff we loved like i don't think it's dumb but you know what i mean like the stuff yeah. we loved in high school like like shushu and like uh hitting cameras and 
all of that is what this feels like where it's like man they just like jamie stewart can just like put like like screeching horrible shrieking throbbing gristle noise together with like out of tune whisper and like it's just it's just like like i'm on the floor like sobbing it's like the most beautiful <laughs> music this is it's when you song. write by a ten in the swear jar. Uh, <laughs> stay tuned. We'll be back really soon.
probably play doing all the things i used to do with people after that cool yeah you'll be able to hear it well welcome it, back i have one more question because we are running out of time of course uh the name i want to know how you come up with names for projects and also <laughs> like i remember when teen suicide was going to change its name to Ghostbud, <laughs> i think and then it stayed and how how has like the evolution of that name and also of names for different projects how do those kind of intertwine so you want to know about names like band names not like song you know names or band whatever. names okay so um so we chose the name teen suicide uh because of heathers nice. obviously <laughs> and it, like I said, when I when when I put out songs as Teen Suicide at first, when I put out Bad Vibes Forever, it was just me, and there's nobody else, and it was one of like 20 fake projects I had that I was putting songs on Bandcamp under, with different names, and like they were all stupid, you know, like I never intended for a lot of people to hear it or anything, it, nor was I trying to hide it. It was just mm -hmm. like Bandcamp. That's the best way to you know let my friends you know download something if they want so i never once considered that like a while later people could go back and like you know find that and then find you know there's other ones and, and blah 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 so that was um but like more people liked it than any of the others so i was like okay maybe there's something to it we kept doing it we became a band things progressed like we never once thought about like anything about it we were like you know what i mean it, i mean it was uh, on the one hand it was like a different time in a way where like no one really interrogated stuff that much like some people did but like the people that did were like the the very outlier you know not like discourse wasn't a word yet it wasn't in the dictionary like no one you know problematic wasn't a thing that oh, wow. no one but like you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh that being like 18 and like very privileged obviously like in the obvious sense you know what i mean like mm. in what like five out of six of them or whatever you know what i mean like um especially then like where 
but like not knowing what that meant you know what i mean like i know that i'm saying that like looking yeah. back we were <laughs> you know very privileged but no one had ever said that in our lives because that wasn't a thing yet it's really weird to think about mm -hmm. Like I, and all of this for the record is like 100% like, God, it's so weird that it used to be that way. I'm glad it's not. It's not like, you know, some dumb Charlie yeah. Kirk, like, like SJW is like the world is bad. No, man. Like, <laughs> like, but it's not like trying to like make, ex you know, like, I don't like, honestly, personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with the name Teen Suicide. I never have. I get why there could be <laughs> like um but also i'm been in the band for like 12 years or whatever and like we've i've personally gotten like you know like twenty thousand emails or something of people you know hitting me up being like you helped me like this way i found your music blah 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 you know and like i try to write every single person back or like respond on twitter or instagram whatever and that's like still the case to this day and like obviously we're not big but like more people listen to us now than then so it's only increased and even when we change the name like nobody cared no one called us anything different you know it's just it was just a thing but anyway um like it only increased with people being like like i'm going to like rehab tomorrow like i my best friend just died like you got me through like it's like God damn man, the world is dark the world is bad yeah. which i've always thought <laughs> that's why we named ourselves that but it's like i don't know i feel like for a little while it was easy to hear people being like yeah your name does this does this does this and like i didn't want it to like i didn't want it to contribute anything worse to an already bad place so i was yeah. like okay um we can't change that but we can try and mitigate it you know what i mean we can try and make it better somehow a little bit you know take responsibility for it um which you know i tried to do uh it didn't do anything you know what i mean it didn't it didn't change anything except for no one knew we were a band anymore which it made it made everyone that relied on us to make money off of us mad mm -hmm. which is <laughs> never good even though i don't try to make music for a living like it definitely i would be so much closer to not having a home or a car if i didn't make music even in the case i mean covid took most of it away but like yeah. even as it is like um i do i've done so many things to make any shot of a career i have like more of a long shot <laughs> and turned down so many things that would have paid me money because i don't agree with them like the like the the xxx tentation rapper thing you know where he wanted us to be on his album and we were like no we will never do that you know you, you just got out of the jail for putting your pregnant girlfriend in the hospital you know yeah. I, what i actually told him was not something i can say on the air like it's just that probably would have done you, good what were you angry when he named his album bad vibes forever i knew he was gonna do it for a long time because he used to talk to us about all that stuff Bef like before anyone knew who he was he would like dm us on twitter and it would just be like another person with like a thousand followers and like one struggle song on their profile being like we love you guys man and it's like that's not a bad i'm sorry like it's not a bad thing i just don't like him <laughs> but um but like i try to be nice because it's like why would you be mean to someone for no reason and then you know he obviously we found out more about him and we're like oh yeah we're not gonna <laughs> we're not gonna endorse that you know what i mean that's mm -hmm. that's literally the opposite of every single thing i stand for and try to do but yeah so like there's a lot of times where my life probably could have been easier <laughs> in some way if uh i had just not done that or like not done the stupid thing or like took the the like the like you know the the metaphorical like google handout money or whatever which we've never really had a chance to get a lot of it but you know what i mean we still uh yeah <laughs> so um at that point when everyone who still is around despite you doing all those things is like oh maybe that wasn't so smart it's like 
all right yeah you know i gotta put some stock in that <laughs> so um as it stands i have no idea what we're called or what we are we tried to change our name to dumpster which i think would have been really cool <laughs> and nobody let us <laughs> everyone was like you can't do that but i've been right before about dumber stuff <laughs> so um i don't know so american pleasure club was a name that i'd used as like a fake side project for a long time uh, i had the band camps was like 2013 or 14 or something i put that on our last record that technically came out was something, you know, I wrote under that name as a fake name back then. Um, but so we, you know, we tried that out. It wasn't the first time, like we've played like um, on tours at like, like Disney owned uh, venues before, like they own House of Blues yeah. in, um, in uh, where is it? Like uh, Anaheim or whatever, one of those places, LA in uh, Orange County and like they don't let you be teen suicide there obviously uh so on the the billboard in downtown Disney you can't say you know teen suicide or <laughs> or whatever so like we'd always choose dumb names for that a sort of like hot sloppy joe boys came from but um thank you so much Sam for coming on this has been the biggest thank you honor. for having me this was a blast seriously <laughs> uh, do you plug your Twitter and your Instagram and whatever Wherever people can oh find man you. just i don't care find our music if you've never heard it it's online for free if it's not free then it's somewhere else for free because Bandcamp makes you run out of free music but yeah. like i've hosted it everywhere you can find it. <laughs> it's on like ever is on soul seek it's not it was on what cd but that's dead <laughs> it's a it's out there. It's on, like, I'll never do takedowns on the old Media Fire blogs. You can still go to the ball and download every Teen Suicide record and whatever. Yeah, just look up Teen Suicide, Ricky Acid, Julia Brown. There might be something you like. Maybe. A lot, of, a lot of different stuff. Listen to, like, three songs. Three different songs. Because, like, we do a lot of things. So, if you don't like the first one, you might like the second If you don't like the second one, you might like the third one. All right. Thank you so much again. Uh, everyone, have a great week. I'll see you next Wednesday with uh, the goalie's anxiety at the penalty kick. It's going to be great. Hello, everyone. This is Sam uh, recording after the airing of the interview on KHDX.FM and uh, after the interview, right before I'm uploading this to the KHDX blog and the YouTube and my YouTube. Uh, first of all, thank you for listening. Uh, fantastic uh, having people listen and Sam Ray was the best guest uh, I, I loved having him on he was so nice so kind so generous with his time so thank you again to Sam for coming on find him at on Twitter at Fugazi420 uh, their music anywhere Spotify buy it on Bandcamp I do say uh, if you want to support little artists next week or if you're listening to this after this specific episode has come out uh, i will be interviewing the goalie's anxiety at the penalty kick makers of the artists behind one of my favorite records of 2020 ways of hearing we had a great conversation me and four of the band members ben anna becky and mike if i'm remembering correctly thank you to all four of them even to the two who couldn't make it uh made a great record and I was very happy to talk with them. I'm so excited for you guys to hear it. Yeah. You can find me on Twitter at name is TBA. No, and Twitter is at not Sam Gibson. Instagram is name at name is TBA. YouTube, Sam Gibson. Just look up Sam Gibson, the last Jedi. You'll find it. Anyways, thank you for listening. Uh, have a great day.